So the objective of this video is to continue the discussion of the anatomical terminology using the lab manual side by side uh, with a set of images um, that is provided to you in order to, to study these different terms um, and, and could be used throughout the semester, frankly. So uh, when we talk about human anatomy, we are often talking about images or, um, or surgically accessed parts of the body or models that are built in order to represent what the body looks like on the inside. And in order to view the body on the inside, we, um, we use a model or an image that has been um, made to represent what it would look like if we cut the body in a particular way along a plane, so to speak. And so we can talk about planes, which is um, the, you know, like a plane in, in geometry, um, a, a plane of the body, and then we'll talk about sections of the body referring to um, different ways that we can cut the body along a particular plane. And so those terms are used somewhat um, interchangeably. So a sagittal plane or section is one that makes a vertical cut that yields left and right pieces. So this particular model here shows the musculature um, of, the, of the outside of the head. We call this a half head because it's been cut in half vertically along the midline. And so more specifically, this is a mid-sagittal plane because it's exactly at the middle. Um, you could have a sagittal section that is not right at the middle and it's still sagittal. Um, and then the other side of this model, the more interesting, well, it's not more interesting, the equally interesting side of the model shows you the brain at the midline, it shows you the nasal cavity, the oral cavity, um, and then kind of going down the throat and down into the neck, and getting out of view in this image. So this is a sagittal plane or section, and pay particular care uh, to practice the spelling of the term sagittal. I remember that the first consonant in the middle of the word, there's one, and the second consonant in the middle of the word, there's two. But this is a pretty fairly uh, commonly misspelled term. The... Uh, model here that is showing the essentially the front uh, skin and bones and subcutaneous fat removed in order to reveal the cavity on the inside of the body represents a frontal or coronal plane or section. So again, a vertical cut, but this time we're making a front or a back piece in this case. The front piece has been removed to reveal the back piece where we can look at these vital organs in the torso. Then a transverse planar section is one where a horizontal cut has been made. And you'll, you'll notice that the term transverse um, is gonna have a pattern where it comes up in the semester of having something to do with kind of a horizontal directionality or going across. So a horizontal cut making top and bottom pieces is a transverse planar section. Then there's a section of the lab manual that talks about body cavities. And this is something that you'll go into more detail on in lecture. Um, but in lab, we want to relate these cavities to the landmarks that allow us to um, sort of recognize what's inside a cavity and what is not inside of a cavity. Um, the human body is very, very organized and very complex compared with uh, certain simpler life forms um, that have many fewer cells and less compartmentalization of the body. So if you think about the head and the torso, um, to, to limit our scope a little bit when we talk about these body cavities, many of our most important organs are positioned um, strategically in particular parts of the head and the torso. And so here we're looking at the way that there are physical membranes in the body that separate 
different cavities that are going to house different organs. This also brings up a, an organizational note about the lab annual, and that is that the margins and the indent of the words are used to represent um, the positioning of something smaller inside of something larger. So there are two large cavities that the head and the torso can be divided into. The dorsal body cavity, because it has the word dorsal in it, is going to be closer to the back, the spine, while the ventral body cavity is going to be closer to the belly and in fact is going to be everything anterior to, everything in front of the spine. Then within the dorsal body cavity, we can further subdivide. I like to think of nesting dolls <laughs> where you have um, smaller containers that are fitting into one larger container, um, maybe suitcases or packing or, um, or um, boxes of organization that hold your different utensils of silverware inside of a larger drawer. There's lots of analogies we could draw. Um, but smaller than and within the dorsal body cavity are the cranial cavity, which is specifically the space that surrounds the brain. So this image here, if I were to ask you the specific space that houses the brain right here, this cavity inside the skull is the cranial cavity. You'll also notice a pattern that a space is often named a cavity when you talk about the correct anatomical term. But if I asked you for the more general space that houses the brain, the larger nesting box, the larger container, that would be the dorsal body cavity. So it's another good thing to, to think about as you go through the content to think about the way that we might ask you to identify a particular structure. And sometimes um, there, the wording of a question would distinguish uh, two different correct answers using the exact same image, such as this image here. The general space here, the, the larger space, is the dorsal body cavity while the more specific space is the cranial cavity. Okay. Uh, the other space within the dorsal body cavity is the space within the spine as it is articulated. And so this image here shows two vertebrae articulating, connected to, stacked on top of each other. And the X here is in the position where the spinal cord runs through the inside of the bones where there is a space or a cavity. And so this space is called the vertebral canal or it's the vertebral cavity. And I prefer vertebral cavity because then I'm consistently calling that space where the spinal cord is housed a cavity every time. What a space is a cavity every time. So again, the more general space is the dorsal body cavity. The specific space is the vertebral cavity where the spinal cord is. So the dorsal body cavity houses the organs of the central nervous system, the brain and the spinal cord. The ventral body cavity, as I mentioned before, is everything in front of the spine, everything in front of the dorsal body cavity. And the more specific spaces that we can talk about dividing the ventral body cavity, which is shown in this opened uh, frontal section model, are the thoracic cavity. Thoracic means chest. And so the thoracic cavity is everything that is above the diaphragm. The diaphragm is this kind of rainbow shaped pink uh, structure here, the lungs uh, meet the superior surface of the diaphragm while the liver meets the inferior surface. The liver is this really dark kind of brownish maroon organ. And so um, within, so the lungs and the heart and the liver and the intestines are all within the ventral body cavity. But the thoracic cavity houses only the lungs and the heart and there are other structures there but among the list i had mentioned before so it excludes everything that is below the diaphragm 
everything inferior to the diaphragm. Then the abdominopelvic cavity is the compartment that is inferior to the diaphragm. So the liver, the intestines, as well as the urinary and reproductive organs are all within the abdominopelvic cavity. Going back to the thoracic cavity, I can talk about more specific spaces that are categorized as serous cavities uh, that you'll talk about in lecture. Um, but more specifically, the pleural cavities are the spaces that surround the lungs, fluid-filled space. And then the pericardial cavity is the space surrounding the heart. So peri, like the word perimeter, is all the way around the outside. Cardia is the heart. So pericardial cavity is the space specifically around the heart. And then this section details the diaphragm as well, since that structure separates the thoracic cavity superiorly from the abdominal pelvic cavity inferiorly, um, it is expected that you would be able to recognize where the diaphragm is, sandwiched between the lungs and the liver. And then the, the last section of this terminology are anatomical landmarks. So these are the anatomical terms for the elbow, the shoulder, the, the, the face, the eyes, the, the, the back part of the knee, that crook, right? The crook of the elbow versus the back of the elbow are going to have different terms. So we use common language, um, and then there are anatomical terms for those landmarks. And we're asking you to learn them in their adjective form because when they're used as a part of an anatomical term to refer to a specific blood vessel or a specific nerve or a particular part of a bone, a uh, feature on a bone, it's going to be using, by and large, the adjective version. So if you put the noun version of a term, uh, so, for example, the acromial region is the uh, landmark for your shoulder, but the acromion is the noun version of that term. So either one of those would be acceptable on an exam, but the adjective is the more common way you'll see it again and again through the semester. And so those are the, the versions that are listed here. So as I mentioned, acromial is the shoulder, axillary is the armpit, Brachial is the arm, which is where your biceps brachii muscle is, right, between the shoulder and the elbow. Proximal to the elbow is the brachial region, right? Distal to the shoulder is the brachial region. Antibrachial is the forearm. Olecranal is the back of the elbow, the, the part you uh, would rest on a table. Anticubital is the front of the uh, elbow, the crook of the elbow where you uh, might get blood drawn. Gluteal refers to the butt, <laughs> where the gluteal muscles are. Femoral refers to where the femur is in the thigh. Patellar, the patella is your kneecap on the front of the knee. Popliteal refers to the crook at the back of the knee. And I'm not really referring to the model, but I can get better about that. Crural is the term for the anterior surface of the shin. Calcaneal refers to the heel. The heel bone is the calcaneus. Plantar refers to the bottom of the foot. So we've got a, a view here that really shows that plantar region. Cephalic refers to the head. Cervical refers to the neck. Thoracic, again, means chest, refers to the chest region. The thoracic spine uh, articulates with the ribs of the rib cage, so those all go together. It's also called the thoracic cage. Abdominal refers to the abdomen. Umbilical is a more specific region right where the belly button is. Pubic refers to the anterior portion of the pelvic region. Ocular refers to the eyes, and oral refers to the mouth. So practice with how all of these sets of images could be used to ask you particular questions, um, asking you for these anatomical 
uh, terminology terms.